this video is for you if there are times when you just don't want to be around any people. Not your people in your family, not people out in the world, not people on the phone, not people on the internet. <laughs> this video is for you if um, you truly sometimes just need the quiet of your own brain. This video is for you if you would be completely happy out in a field in nature with nothing else around but the natural environment. If that sounds like you, please stay with me because I want to share with you some of my thoughts about being alone. So this morning it was a beautiful morning and the sky was clear and the weather is like 55, 60 degrees and the leaves on the trees are truly changing colors, finally. And all I wanted to do after a very hectic and stressful day yesterday was to come to my park and walk around my park and find a nice bench to sit on after my walk to listen to my podcast and not be around any people. So I got in the car and I came to my park and the first thing I see is that the parking lot is rather full. So although I was a bit disappointed, I decided to give it a go anyway because it's a big park and there's plenty of spaces in this park to sit and relax and even walk where there are less people. So I went ahead and gave it a try. And I walked around the park listening to a podcast. It was feeling really nice. But then on my way back down to do my second loop, this feeling just came over me this feeling of like if I did not get out of the park in the next moment or two, I was going to not be okay. Now, sometimes I struggle with alexithymia and if you are neurodivergent, you might understand alexithymia. And that just means that you have a hard time describing, uh, describing your emotion. So I can't find the emotion word to give to it. Um, but I know that I, I didn't feel like I was going to have a nervous breakdown. It wasn't like that. I just felt like I couldn't be around these people in the park anymore. I was really yearning to find the spaces of the park where there was nobody, like in the field that you can see off to my shoulder there, or <clears throat> up in the hiking trails, but I'm not wearing hiking shoes today and didn't want to go that far. So I came back down here to my car to have some time alone. Now, this is part of what it's like being me, uh, being autistically me, um, being me as 55 year old woman who has given all the parts of myself all throughout my life. And now I just want the more quiet spaces. This is what it's like. Sometimes it's really frustrating because I want to be experiencing the world all around me. By no means am I a hermit, and by no means do I have fear about being out in the world. It's definitely not that. It's just that I prefer my own thoughts. <laughs> I prefer being an observer rather than an engager. Leave me a comment below if you understand what I'm talking about. I prefer, if I'm at the park, to find a quiet place where I can sit on the bench after my walk and watch the people around, the few people around, <laughs> or watch the leaves fall from the trees. I like to watch the birds. I like to listen to my podcast. I don't want to feel um, the need to have to smile at people as they walk by or say hi. I don't want to feel the need to have to reach down and pet a dog that comes up to me because it's a, an off-leash dog park. I, I don't want to feel that I'm responsible for engaging in society the way that we're expected to. I often do, and many times I'm just fine doing that. But because of my neurodivergence, my high sensitivity, um, and the general anxiety that I think I've lived with for the majority of my life. When I feel that it's a no, it's a no. And I've got to take myself out of the situation. So as I'm sitting here talking with you right now, I'm realizing that today it was a definite no 
being around so many people because this whole past week was teacher parent conference week at work from Tuesday through Friday. So not only did I have to be responsible for teaching from eight o'clock until one o'clock, but then from one o'clock until four, it was back to back parent conferences all afternoon, four afternoons of the week. So I was in, had to be highly engaged. I had to be tuned in, turned on, <laughs> focused on data and focused on meeting the needs of the parents and the children in front of me. Um, that, that did me in. That really did me in. And today I would love to find a place in my town where there is nobody, where I can just sit in quiet, and watch the leaves and the birds and listen to things. So there's this very deep need for aloneness. But what's different about me is that, and maybe this is true for you too, is that when I'm alone, I don't feel lonely. I don't feel lonely at all. I feel whole. I feel complete. I feel surrounded by, <laughs> I feel Italian right now. <laughs> I feel surrounded by like, by joy. And I just saw a whole group of birds fly across. Um, I feel complete when I'm alone. I'm often, you know, pressured when I'm you know in my family and at home and everybody's got something to say and wanting to have conversations and checking in on me and you know hey babe what are you gonna have for dinner or are we having dinner tonight or um hey babe I'm going into the garage and hey I'm going to get a drink of water and um here I am I'm back again how are you doing hey mom um hi mom hey honey and then 20 minutes later, hi, mom, how are you? The same as I was 20 minutes ago. <laughs> All of that kind of, I guess that's what you would call small talk in a family system. The family system small talk just is too much for me too at times. And uh, I escape here to my car, <laughs> preferably not in my car, but here in my car just to be with my thoughts. I love my thoughts. I even love the thoughts I have that are frustrating thoughts because they're mine and I'm in control of them. <laughs> I can turn them off when I want to and I can turn them on when I want to. I'm not lonely when I'm with myself. I love my family and I love my partner and I don't want to be without them but I'm needing to train them to understand that I'm okay if they're not there. And if they're gone for a day, I'm not missing them in my heart. I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. If my daughter left to go to college, I would miss her. And if my husband had to go on a trip somewhere for a week, I would likely miss him to some degree, both of them. But, but I thrive in the quiet spaces of my world. And, um, I think that since it's been a lot of years since I've um, that since they've been in my life that they're starting to realize this now and be okay with it. Um, but I still often feel so misunderstood, and there are times when I have to remind the people in my life that that we're okay and it I'm not um, I'm not angry with them or. Um, needing space from them because I need a break from them. It's just that I'm being me. It's hard to explain to people who don't have the same brain as you do. But I know that some of you who are here with me right now understand this because you've understood me so far. And if you're part of the neurodivergent tribe of autism, <clears throat> ADHD, high sensitivity, or any of the other um, neurological different brains, group of people. Uh, I, I'm, I know that I'm safe sharing this here in this space with you. One of the people in my life 
that I know for sure has always understood this and uh, this idea about um, not being lonely when they're alone is my oldest child. My son um, has spent a lot of his time, a lot of time on his own in his room, um, not necessarily always enjoying small talk. He has always enjoyed deep conversation about a topic and he will stay in a conversation about an interesting topic for a long period of time. But if it's just the, hey, how you doing? What's going on? Blah, blah, blah. He's not, not so much into that. In fact, when he was a teenager, he would often come to me and explain to me that that was, was hard for him to be around his friends because they weren't talking about anything of importance. <laughs> um, and I, I tried to help him through it, you know, just keep on being you your friends have always accepted you and you just hang out with them and be with them until you feel like maybe it's not a good fit anymore but at that time I didn't realize that I was neurodivergent uh, later on we found out that my son uh, definitely has ADHD and I believe that he might be autistic too um, but that's for him to decide and explore but anyway then I realized that I was neurodivergent too and I really, really see a lot of similar behaviors between the two of us. Um, and when I saw him unapologetically owning his alone time and honoring it, that's when I started realizing that that's fine for me to do too. I mean, heck, he's already in his 20s, like, and he's away at college right now. So um, he was a model for me he kind of inspired me to, to own it for myself. So I'm alone. No, let me take that back. I'm not alone. I have people in my life. But when I am alone, I am not lonely. When I'm alone, I'm not struggling. When I'm alone, I'm not feeling depressed. I am just being and enjoying the space in my brain and the surroundings that I'm in. And I think it's a true gift that I can say that and that I can be that without feeling that I need to do anything differently. When I'm at work, if I need to not be with people, I just stay in my classroom on my breaks. When I am home and I've had too much of... Um, too much of the chit chat, too much of the, of the social engagement with my family, too much small talk. That's what I'm trying to say. I just go up to my room and I tell that to my family. I'm going to be up in my room for a while. They always think I'm taking a nap. I'm, I'm not taking a nap. Gosh, if I slept that much, that would be a miserable existence. No, I'm not taking a nap. I'm just being alone. I'm reading a book or I'm looking out the window where I'm playing with my cats. Anyway, I just wanted to make this video today to honor my uh, <laughs> honor my aloneness, <laughs> um, to connect with others of you who feel the same way, and um, to just put out there that alone does not mean lonely. All right, thanks for watching. Um, watch one of these videos next. See you next time. Love you.